This is Defenders TV Podcast, episode 71, where we're starting Summer of Strange with Doctor Strange 101. Welcome back, Defenders, to Summer of Strange with Defenders TV Podcast. We're here with episode 71 of our podcast talking about Doctor Strange, all about him, from the beginnings all the way through to where he is now. I'm one of your hosts, Derek. I'm one of your other strange hosts, John. And a rounding out the truth, truth I'm Chris. Welcome back, everybody. Good to have everybody here for thank our you. Summer of Strange podcast. Welcome back, Chris. Thank you, thank you. You let me enter the astral plane just for this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I might hope- even be back. I- <laughs> and hopefully for all of the Summer yes. of Strange. Uh, you, uh, I think for our regular listeners, you probably heard the phrase... Uh, leading to Doctor Strange, the movie by Scott Derrickson coming out uh, at the end of October in Ireland and the UK and in early November over in the US and Canada. Um, I think you've, met, you've heard us mention that many, many times. So we decided to uh, take a bit of a, a bit of time while we're on our break from the Defenders shows on Netflix, uh, as ne- Netflix doesn't release Luke Cage until the 30th of September. Uh, while we're on a bit of a break, we're going to do a bit of a Summer of Strange discussion all about uh, our thoughts on Doctor Strange uh, leading up to the new movie. Absolutely. And to go with that, we have a competition, our Summer of Strange competition, with prizes from Doctor Strange comic books, Doctor Strange Marvel Pops, uh, and also electronic versions of the current Doctor Strange Way of the Weird, um, all available. If you leave a review on our iTunes uh, site, just go to DefendersTVPodcast.com forward slash iTunes. You can also leave a review on any other good podcast catcher as well, and that will also go into the draw. Again, if you leave a review, please just send us a, an email as well to feedback at defenderstvpodcast.com, just so that we know and so that we don't miss anyone who's left a review for this competition. Mm-hmm. Names will go into a hat and will be... We- will be drawn uh, f- on the first episode of our Luke Cage um, and uh, the prizes will be sent out open to anyone uh, anywhere in the world. Um, so please uh, leave a review on iTunes. It helps uh, people find the podcast and it also helps us to uh, change aspects of the podcast up um, where we can. Well, absolutely. And just a reminder for anybody who has left us a review on iTunes, a huge thank you for that, obviously. Absolutely. Uh, a couple of reviews on there that we haven't actually uh, discussed on the podcast, but uh, thanks so much for leaving them. Uh, if you want to go in and update your review on uh, on iTunes, if you left us one back in 2015 when we started the podcast <laughs> and want to update that, that will put you make you eligible for the draw as well. Again, just send us an email to feedback at defenderstvpodcast.com. We want everybody in this draw. Uh, some really good prizes there. I love the Doctor Strange podcast. Uh, we got one for uh, our podcast room. I kind of want another one, but we will be sending this out to whoever wins the competition. <laughs> there are I a promise. few Marvel pops coming out around Doctor Strange. I think there's uh, a Mordo one as well. There is. Like Carl Mordo. Yeah. Yeah, there so is. That's all really very and cool. And there's a Cassilius one with the burnt out eyes, yeah, which yeah. looks really cool. Uh, for a pop to look that evil is, uh, is unusual, but I really liked it as well. Uh, And of course, during the Summer of Strange, any thoughts that you have, any comments on the character of Doctor Strange, any of his associates, affiliations, antagonists, um, just send them in to feedback at DefendersTVPodcast.com. You can also leave it on our uh, group on Facebook. Go to Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Defenders TV Podcast, or you can chat um, uh, with us on our Twitter handle at Defenders Cast. Any thoughts you have, any expectations about the movie, uh, any comments on uh, the, the stuff that we're going to look over and, and review and discuss on the podcast, your thoughts or comments are, of course, as always, really appreciated. Absolutely. And finally, if you want to leave us some audio feedback, which we can discuss on our podcast, just pop on over to the website, DefendersTVPodcast.com. Click the Leave Feedback button and it'll take you to a recording section where you can record about 90 seconds of your thoughts about anything we're discussing on the podcast. We always love to hear from our listeners, as always, so lots of ways to get in contact. I think it's about time to get into Doctor Strange 101. Yeah, so first off, Chris, um, what's your experience with the character? I know (gasps) Doctor Strange through pretty much his kind of crossovers with uh, Spider-Man, just based in Manhattan and... 
Um, or Greenwich Village. Greenwich Village. Yeah. Greenwich Village. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, One one seven <clears throat> Bleecker Street. Ooh, you, I believe. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would pretty much know a lot of it through the crossover with Spider Man, which I kind of grew up on, and X Men, which he didn't make that much uh, kind of a crossover with mm -hmm. some uh, Avengers, um, but then also the animated Spider Man series. Yes. Back in the day when it started getting towards more the magic side, where it was like uh, the Madam Madam Silk. Madame Mask, was it? Madame Mask, yeah. I think it was it. Um, so she was in it, and then the, there was a whole dimension drop, hopping piece, and there was some magic elements. Um, and that was really it, uh, up until the animated, uh, Marvel one that came out, which we'll be reviewing again, uh, later on a part of our Summer of Strange. Mm -hmm. And that was really it. I've never really took a lot of kind of, or really jumped into, or been taken hold by the, the mystic magic elements of Marvel Universe. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, it was like the, I understood and I really enjoyed the Thor Asgard element where it was a lot more sciencey based. Yeah. Um, but for the overall straight out magic piece, it just, it never really got its fingers into me, but the more that we're delving into strange and everything leading to strange, I, I'm starting to kind of get a bit more interest in it. Mm hmm. And yeah, that's part of the reason why we're doing this Summer of Strange is kind of trying to get us all up to speed on Doctor Strange and some of his some of his background. Yeah, absolutely. So, Derek, what's your um, background with this character? I think right back to the first episode, I think I've mentioned that my favourite character in the Marvel Universe is Nick Fury. Um, no. Yeah, what a shocker. <laughs> what yeah. a shocker. Nobody, nobody will know that. Um, but I got into Nick Fury when I was when I was a kid. Uh, I went back and read all of his comic books right the way back to uh, his Strange Tales uh, appearances. This is where they turned the World War II veteran of Nick Fury into the leader of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, in, one three, in issue 135 of, of Strange Tales. Strange Tales was a weird comic book because it was a compilation comic book. It was ba basically about 15 pages of story uh, of Nick Fury, agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the other 15 pages of the 30-page comic book were dedicated to Doctor Strange. Mm -hmm. So a really weird combination of these two characters. You've got a, quite a grounded uh, super spy and on the back page of it, you have, um, this really magical realm. So, uh, that's where my, that's where I, I, I suppose I got my lead into Doctor Strange, um, from those 60, 60s comic books, some beautiful artwork, some really, really interesting stuff going on. Uh, when, um, when Nick Fury was going into some of the weirder aspects, I think that was probably trying to take some elements from Doctor Strange so that the comic books could match a bit better. Um, you had these wonderful covers that were bringing in the Doctor Strange element, and then you'd open it up and you'd be reading a, a you know a, a super spy um, comic book. So a lot of the artwork for that Starenko brought into Nick Fury, I think, was taking a bit of a lead in from Ditko's version of uh, of Doctor Strange. So it was actually. It became one of my regular reads. I'd pick up the book and read both uh, both of the characters. So I do know a fair bit about, about Doctor Strange. Um, wouldn't have been my my favorite character. I hadn't read much of his own solo series uh, before meeting John, who is uh, possibly a bit of a bigger fan. He'll talk about it in a second. Um, <laughs> but I know a lot about Strange now, I think. Um, but I think we all need a bit of a catch up as to where he came from, um, who he is, and uh, wh where he where he fits within the Marvel universe because he is a different character to most other characters we've seen on screen in the past. John, do you want to tell us what your background with Doctor Strange is and how, what your knowledge about him is? Well, he's my favorite character. Um, I, and again, it won't be a surprise to people who've listened to this. Um, I've been talking about all roads leading to the Doctor Strange movie 2016. I think back in 2015 uh -huh. when we started uh, podcasting on Defenders TV podcast. Uh, he's one of my favorite characters. Um, I think primarily drawn through the artwork of Steve Ditko, all that psychedelic um, artwork, just the amazing spreads that that, that occurred in the comics. Um <clears throat> Primarily as a teenager, I think up till then, that's where I really got into the, the Marvel comics and it was through Doctor Strange. Um, and then I kind of let that go a bit and it was with Straczynski's, um, re retelling of the origin Strange that I really came back to, to Doctor Strange and, and reignited, um, my love affair with this, this character, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, for me, I feel very, uh, honored to be living at a time where effectively uh we have this movie coming out i never expected that there would be a doctor strange movie i mean i was absolutely stoked just purely with the animated uh movie that was done uh in in what was it 2005 yeah. 2006 so 
Um, for me to have um, a Doctor Strange movie coming in literally three months, I'm absolutely super hyped about. Um, and even just to think that I think Feige, Kevin Feige, if it wasn't for him, there probably wouldn't be a Doctor Strange movie. Mm. I, I have a feeling that he has a, um, an interest as well, a personal interest in this character. I really get that sense from him. Yeah. Um, and I think it, you know, just it's, he's an important character in the universe. Um, and I have to say, at the time, obviously, the the arrogant neuros, neurosurgeon I didn't really um, know of when I really got into him. Um, and then I went back to the origin, and it was like, oh, he was a bit of a dick actually mm-hmm. <laughs> before or beforehand, but. <laughs> I like that that travel, that 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 movement from him being that to being um, a defender and protector of humanity. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think we should go into a little bit of the creation. I'll talk about the kind of creation of the character, where he came from, and then we'll kind of go through uh, some of the main arcs, some of the main antagonists and protagonists, his friends and allies. Um, I think, John, you can lead a lot of this. You can discuss a lot of it. Well, I should just add as well, it's not 117, it's 177 A bleaker street very in good York, in greenwich ah, village and of course good. it's interesting the time with sherlock holmes of 221 uh, b uh, baker street mm-hmm. and obviously with benedict cumberbatch being um the inhabitant of both those uh those houses on those streets very very true very true i like that a nice little touch um so the origin of Doctor Strange is an interesting one in comic books. It was created by Steve Ditko at a time when Steve Ditko was working a lot with Stan Lee. And I think everybody knows that Stan Lee takes a lot of credit for the creation of characters um, throughout throughout his time on comic books. And a lot of the other creators or his co-creators would say that they were uh, they were the main leaders of that. And Steve, uh, sorry, and Stan Lee uh, takes a lot more credit than at times than uh, some of the creators think he's due. The interesting thing about Doctor Strange is that Steve Ditko totally came up with the idea uh, during the run of Strange Tales, um, issue 1110 and was when yeah. it was published. But 1963. In 1963, yeah. Um, but Steve Ditko came up with the idea, drew an eight-page spec um, with the script, uh, done by himself, brought it to Stan Lee, and Stan Lee championed it. Um, in various interviews throughout the decade, Stanley has always claimed this is a Steve Ditko project, and he worked with Ditko on his creation. So, um, very different for the for the comic books. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, their other big collaboration, um, where it is Stanley and Steve Ditko as co-creators, is obviously Spider Man, which is yep. your uh, favorite. Um, pretty much, hundred percent my favorite yeah. Yeah. like character, hundred yeah. percent. Um, so it's it's interesting that that um, you know. Two of Marvel's biggest characters in Spider-Man and then Doctor Strange. Uh, maybe Doctor Strange less so, obviously, but um, coming from Steve Ditko mm-hmm. with obviously Stan Lee involved as well to varying degrees. Absolutely. Uh, and another one of the more interesting things about the creation, uh, and I think St- Scott Derrickson, the director of the new film, has mentioned this as well. Um, one of the most interesting things about Doctor Strange is the character came in fully formed, unlike almost every character in the Marvel Universe, particularly in the 60s. Almost every one of them had an origin story in their first issue. Um, what happened here was this was the backup story to a yeah. human, to- human torch story in issue 110 of, of Strange Tales. Um, it was a fully formed Sorcerer Supreme uh, living in the Sanctum Sanctorum, um, knowing uh, that he is the master of the mystic arts. We had uh, issue 110 and 111, both um, without any origin story, just a story about him battling um, uh, battling against the the dark powers. Uh, then there was a break for a couple of issues, and apparently because of all the letters they got in about this interesting character, they they wrote the origin story of Doctor Strange, released in issue 115, so about three months after it started, with a break. Uh, and then we had him as the title character of Strange Tales. Um Another interesting point about his name itself, the name Stephen Strange, comes purely from the fact that it was being published in Strange yeah, Tales. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the character was written by Steve, <laughs> Steve Ditko, but Steve, obviously, is Stephen Ditko. Yeah, so that's where Steve gets his name. Yeah. And then it being published in Strange Tales is where he got Strange. So I uh, really like that idea that he didn't come formed with a name, that he was just given it because of the title he was pu- being published in. And I think for those reasons, you know, it, it's the same uh, Scott Derrickson said at San Diego Comic-Con. He said... You know, Doctor Strange was a left turn for Marvel in terms of how he was introduced, as as Derek said, uh, being um, without an origin tale from the outset, but also just in terms of 
it took uh, the Marvel Universe into this realm of magic uh, and multiple realms um, and the mystic arts and all this. And you have, um, you know, Stephen Strange being the Sorcerer Supreme and the primary kind of protector mm-hmm. of, of Earth against all these threats from the mystical and magical worlds and um, that kind of inhabit the, uh, the same space but are all uh hidden from the from reality and um that this the film coming in in uh, october november will do a similar thing potentially uh, it's interesting i wonder whether the origin tale is very much a small part of um this film that we will see mm. uh, done by Scott Derrickson in, in October and, and November. It is interesting. Um, they mentioned a number of times in the last phase of the Marvel movies that they were done with origin stories. They were not going to do any more origin stories. With Doctor Strange, you have to tell some form of origin story. Definitely. Because it's magic. It's something that hasn't been seen in the universe of the Marvel MCU anyway. Uh, they haven't used magic at all. So they will have to have some form of origin story. We've seen it in both the trailers that have been released. So we know there is an origin story in that. But I do wonder if they're going to put that in the middle of the film or if it's just going to be five minutes of the film and then they're going to kick off into this supremely powered uh, member of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. And of course, just to touch on what Derek had said, you know, the other left turn was this psychedelic, trippy visuals that Ditko brought to the character. Um, you know, the, the color, the, the palettes, the, the, the spread on the page. Um, and just, um, you know, there was, the notion of the influence of drugs in the Marvel, um, uh, in the Marvel offices at the time. Yeah. Uh, letters going, you know, where is this art coming from? But really very much a, a product of the, the sixties when this character was introduced and created. But it, he also became a popular character on university campuses at that time through the, the trippy sixties mm-hmm. uh, and, uh, Obviously, the use of hallucinogenic uh, drugs, it kind of tied in with this this movement and this uh, within society, which was kind of interesting as well. Yeah, yeah. Can I ask one question? Just previously when we were doing back with Agent Carter, mm-hmm. um, they, they, they pre, before season two aired, they said that there would be a tie-in with the, the, the mystic elements of Doctor Strange mm. in the film. Obviously, everything being connected. Yeah. Or not so connected, um, as they sometimes say now. Um, so how do we... Has that been explained yet? Is there elements that we still have to wait and see? Um, I think partially it's wait and see, but there is um, the power that uh, that the villainess in uh, in Agent Carter Season 2, the power that she uses, is called something different in... Uh, in Agent the Carter. Dark Matter. Um, yeah, they yeah. called they called it Dark Matter in uh, in uh, Agent Carter. Um, but they will be calling it something different in Agents of Shield and in uh, and in Doctor Strange. But there is a, a line through the three of those together to be tied together. Okay, so that's how they're going to explain the more mystic elements of. Okay, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, so it is that it is that um, Madame Mask in uh, in Agent Carter was using. Um, was using the same power that Doctor Strange will call upon in the Doctor or Strange Or fight movie. against. Or fight against, exactly. Okay. Yeah, so very, very interesting one. But it's interesting that you speak of the controversy about Doctor Strange. There was a lot of controversy when he yeah. came out in the 60s because of the fact that people were thinking that everybody over in Marvel was smoking that, <laughs> those dirty drugs and, and this is, this was the out product. Uh, Roy Thomas, who is one of my favorite Marvel writers, a, a long-term writer on, uh, on Nick Fury, uh, was questioned about it and he said nobody in the office has ever used drugs. This was not coming from the mind of drug use. This was coming from a really creative artist like Ditko who was using it. To do something very different, you know, um, if you're writing a monthly comic book at the time, you were drawing city streets, landscapes all the time. You know, you have you have Spider-Man. He's always going down Manhattan. You're just drawing buildings all the time. Uh, this was Steve Ditko's creative outlet. This is where what he was using to draw some actual pieces of artwork uh, before anybody else in the industry was doing it. So. He had to fill black space or, or mm-hmm. realms where there was nothing or, or, of anything to draw on. This was absolutely novel absolutely unique um and you know again was a huge addition to the marvel out- output absolutely i am certain that at some point there have been artists that have been involved in doctor strange who either uh, you know expanded their minds with drugs as as they are wont to do uh, back in those days uh, to get some of the amazing visuals we've seen over the years um 
But that's the creation from the comic book standpoint of Doctor Strange. John, do you want to give us a bit of an overview of the origin of Doctor Strange? What are we going to see um, when we get to the Doctor Strange well, movies? This is definitely Origin 101. You know, maybe slight spoilers here as well for, for the film. So, you know, just be, be aware of that. But I mean, ultimately, we start off that Doctor Strange is a hugely talented, but with it, a hugely arrogant neurosurgeon. Um, who really, his main interest is his own self-aggrandizement, his own financial wealth. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's pretty rude, actually. Oh, and yeah. he's pretty uh, horrible kind of personality. But he ends up having this car accident um, where effectively he loses his prized asset which are his hands, which means he can no longer perform operations. So he ultimately loses his job and bums out, and he tries all manner of different things to uh, try and reclaim the precision and steady hand of a surgeon um, in medical science, and ultimately all of these fail, and, and he he becomes more and more... Um, extreme in terms of what he's looking for to try and bring about the 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 healing of, of, of his of his hands and this leads him going down effectively a route that he wouldn't normally have taken and down a a, 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 a magical mystical kind of um buddhist type of healing approach to to his hands and he he ventures to tibet where he comes across uh, this monastery uh, and is introduced to the ancient one who effectively reveals to him uh, and challenges his arrogance and and reveals that you know there are more things to the world than the medical science that he is um he is used to. And under then the Ancient One, he begins um, a tutelage to learn and become a master of uh, the mystical arts mm. and the incantations required to effectively become uh, the Sorcerer Supreme, who is the ultimate protector uh, of the Earth for, against mystical, magical threats. Um, and here in, in this origin tale, we, we meet... Um, Baron Karl Mordo, who is also a student of the Ancient One. And ultimately, the, the, the two uh, pupils ultimately come at loggerheads, where Baron Mordo assumes that he will become the Sorcerer Supreme. Right. But actually, it is Stephen Strange who mm. is the one, in effect, um, chosen by the Ancient One, by the other higher magical powers, um, to become the, the Sorcerer Supreme. But ultimately, this, this provides a really great, um, antagonist to Doctor Strange, you know, uh, Mordo, because it's so personal. Uh, mm-hmm. It's almost like a, um, it's like a childhood uh, falling out that never heals to an extent. Yeah. And that's one of the great things. Um, and Mordo tries to ultimately destroy and kill the Ancient One because he's under the control of Dormammu. Uh, and Stephen Strange then takes on the mantle of Sorcerer Supreme, uh, protecting, um, uh, the ancient one and, and sort of trying to uh, stop that plan, that evil plan hatched against uh, the ancient one. Right. So, because um, it, it is one of the interesting ones that I probably didn't pick up very much when I was reading the comic books that there are masters of the mystic arts, which are which are people like Wong and people like um, like Baron Mordo and Doctor Strange. They are all ma- they are all masters of the mystic arts. And then there's one Sorcerer Supreme who is the leader of all of the Masters of Mystic Arts. It's something that I didn't really pick up much uh, until I read the prequel comic for um, for the new movie. That's the first time I realized there are many Masters of Mystic Arts. Everybody can master the art of the mysticism, yeah, I suppose. Okay. But you can you you graduate to become, or one is chosen out of them to become the Sorcerer Supreme. Absolutely. And the other thing to build on that is in the way of the weird is is that comes out as well. Uh, in obviously a, a more recent comic is that there are multiple Sorcerer Supremes within different magical realms, right. the Earth being one of them. And whilst they can move about between them, they also inhabit and protect their their own specific areas as, so, uh, as well. Send a little similar to the Green Lanterns in yeah. the DC universe, possibly. To an extent, yeah. Yeah, yeah. interesting, yeah. But better. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, and, and that's, that in a nutshell is his origin. Mm-hmm. Um, again, as I said, 
J. Michael uh, Straczynski and, and Sam Barnes uh, did the miniseries Strange, which basically brought up to date Doctor Strange's origin as well. Yes. Um, and that is a really good uh, read as well. It, it ties into his his reimagining of the origin of Thor again. All that sort of similar artwork, really nice um, artwork, I think. Um, and, you know, I, I'm a big fan of Straczynski anyway mm. um, with, with some of his... Um, uh, Top Cow, um, like Rising Stars, oh, the, the, yeah. the, you know those comics, and again with the Thor. So he does a really good job of Certainly reimagining um, uh, Doctor Strange's world and introducing different elements, say with regards to Clear as well, mm. um, and, and oh, so on. So it's really worth a read um, as well. That yeah, and I think Straczynski is also well known. He's written a lot of TV shows and some movies as well. So he's really good at that story structure that that is really needed around something like the mystical character of, of Stephen Strange. So I think he's a really good pairing with that character. You need someone that can tell stories really well uh, to kind of get get that across to the general Marvel audience. And I think he does a great job. And just for our listeners who are just new to kind of comic books as a whole, mm-hmm. you're just coming in through the Marvel Netflix series. Um, John, there's always been this thing of that in Marvel versus DC, like DC would uh, brought out Green Arrow and Marvel brought out Hawkeye. Yeah. So there is a very powerful similar doctor in DC called Doctor Doctor Fate. F- Doctor Fate. Yeah. So would who came first? It's Doctor Fate came oh, first. Okay. Um, he was back. Um, I think in the forties. Um, and his his origin is very much around. Um, enchanted uh, helmet uh, and. Uh, uh, the, the wearer of that helmet becomes Dr. Fate, and that can be anyone. Uh, the current run um, that is out on DC at the moment is, is all bringing it back to the Egyptian mythology. It's kind of much more from an archaeological okay. stand, standpoint. Yeah. But the, the, this um, and, and the enchanted uh, objects seem to come from a more archaeological perspective and, and the ancient world, but then the, the helmet uh, imbues... Uh, powers, uh, magical powers and so on, on the wearer of the helmet in Dr. Fate. So, um, yeah, it, it, that came, Dr. Fate came before, uh, okay. in this instance, mm-hmm. yeah. And speaking of magical artifacts, so there is some magical artifacts in Dr. Strange Loads, as well. Loads, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. How many do we need to know about? Um, what do we need to know? Which ones do we need to know? Well, yeah, I suppose this kind of comes in under our section on allies and protagonists and so on. Mm-hmm. I think to that, I would definitely add enchanted objects okay. or items uh, and also team affiliations as well. Right. So um, the the big one is the Eye of Agamotto. So oh, yes. that is the one uh, that's around his neck. You see that in the trailer. And that's the main kind of source of power you do enchantments through through that there's also the orb of agamato as well which is at the sanctum santorum and that's more what's like, the sanctum santorum that's where he lives so that's okay. 1778 bleaker street in greenwich village and um, sanctum santorum and you have i mean in effect his bible i suppose if you want is the book of vishanti mm-hmm. uh, which is the symbol that you see in his um in the window okay. of, of the sanctum santorum in in greenwich village mm-hmm. uh, the, the, uh, and the, the artwork for our podcast and the artwork yes. for our podcast <laughs> yeah. as well the the o in of um, yes. and uh, that that's a theme that runs through and actually the vishanti are a higher power of, of magic that imbue uh, the 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 world with with magic and are I suppose, those sorcerer supremes to the power of ten, like right. Rex. So, wow, okay. so they are powerful beings. And um, I suppose discussing it earlier, we we're saying a bit like the Inhumans. You know, that there's that kind of element. They're almost like another race. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, so you you have the Book of Ashanti where all the incantations and that come from, and that's where a lot of his power comes from. It is these um, these objects that are linked to other people and other. Uh, powerful magicians uh, uh, and mystical um, individuals. Mm -hmm. Um, So you you have the crimson bands of uh, Satarak as well, uh, which Satarak is a person. You have have the Wand of Watatum as well, which again, so these are all people that imbue and enchant these objects. Um, Of course, the big one um, is the Cloak of Levitation. Oh, Oh, from the the latest trailer, it's just amazing. Like, yeah, that that little flick where, you know, it's not a cape. It allows 
Doctor Strange to to effectively fly. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it has a mind of its own. It, it, it does move on, on its own accord. It's kind um, of like Mjolnir, uh, Thor's hammer as well. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a mystical weapon or a mystical, sorry, mystical object that uh, allows the user to do something, in this case, fly. Yeah, because uh, I've always seen Doctor Strange, usually he's like floating, levitating, mm-hmm. cross-legged in that kind of very like yogi pose yeah. with his yeah. fingers out and his... His his hands in the usual strange position, mm-hmm. and then we have so that I mean that is that's his that along with the eye of Agamotto are you know his two big um, items that mm-hmm. help him, and, and, and he, was course, rewar- he was rewarded with a cloak after beating Dormammu for the first time, his big villain. Yes, and that's the, that yeah. was the that was the piece he didn't have it to begin with. So I think I mentioned on a previous podcast. I thought he had it in the first the first time we saw Doctor Strange, but the cloak was a later edition. As a reward for his big battle, his first big win. Um, so basically, like a D and D battle, you get a nice trick. You get a nice, at the end, exactly. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so he's a he's a wizard in D and D. Now it makes sense. <laughs> there, you go, there you go. He gets twenty experience points for killing Jamal every time. <laughs> exactly. So you mentioned which you can trade in for, for, <laughs> for, for levitation. So you mentioned the Eye of Agamotto. There's been a lot of um, focus on that in the trailers for the upcoming yeah. movie, um, primarily because the the thought is is that the time gem will be housed within within the eye or or maybe is the all seeing eye that allows them to move between different times uh, within different realms right so right that and um, moving on to the astral planes to be able to move around and of course that then is one of the six of the infinity gems or the soul gems that will uh, occur within the infinity wars that are coming later on the movies, uh, yeah. yeah the the movies uh on the Marvel slate. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, the Eye of Agamotto, huge. Um, the, you've also got the Shields of Seraphim, which I think you see at the end of um, the second trailer of, of Doctor Strange, where he's kind of protecting himself from magical energy. That's right. In some yeah. description. Yeah. Um, th- there's also the idea that maybe that is a, a just magical enchantment around him anyway from um, encanting spells. So there's all of that. Um, and then, I suppose, speaking of these are his allies, along with a load of other, uh, you know, more human-based uh, allies, and of yeah. course, um, and, and the affiliations. But I mean, amongst them you have, obviously, Wong, who is traditionally has been Maybe portrayed as a, like a butler, almost a bit like an Alfred role in, in Batman mm. to an extent. And I wonder whether that was kind of one of the reasons why Wong is typically, uh, certainly in the earlier comics, uh, a manservant or identified as that. And it, it's kind of nice to see that that the moving away from that, that it's, um, that Wong, uh, will be portrayed a, as kind of a, a master of the mystical arts in his own right. He's a protector of Stephen Strange as well, whilst he's on his astral plane and he's meditating. Mm-hmm. Um, he's also a protector of the Sanctum Santorum and the, uh, the artifacts. Um, <clears throat> so there's really, um, there's a really nice, uh, comic series as well by, um, uh, Brian, by Brian K. Vaughan. Um, Doctor Strange, the Oath, which is about that relationship between Wong and um, and Doctor Strange, mm. uh, and and uh, Doctor Strange having to protect uh, 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 Wong uh, uh, and to try and uh, protect him. He's basically got terminal cancer uh, and this terminal illness that he, in a sense, has has nothing that he can do about it. It is a really interesting um, story right. about their relationship. Very um, interesting. You've got Claire. Uh, who is effectively, you know, to an extent his love interest, and they certainly, um, move about the mystical realm together. Uh, Claire as well has a really interesting, uh, backstory in that she is related to, uh, Dormammu and Umar, both big, um, threats to Doctor Strange and to, to Earth, and obviously coming from the dark dimension, but she is, um, an ally. A bit like in Guardians of the Galaxy, where you've got Gamora, who effectively, you know, um, daughter of Thanos, who really doesn't like him. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there's elements of, of that about the. And then you have um, the Ancient One, who is um, 
Stephen Strange's mentor, mm. um, who uh, trains him, who, um, you know, is there always uh, in the background, has threats against him or her, uh, whoever the Ancient One uh, may be, um, you know, so... Yeah, I've always kind of thought of the Ancient One as being like those characters in Kung Fu films, um, the those kind of uh, older characters that you think don't have enough power, they're at the end of their life, and then they break into the most amazing moments of action, you know. You always think that there's something behind the Ancient One. He is sitting and meditating a lot, but remember, he is the one that teaches the masters of the mystic arts. He's he's the one that imparts all of that knowledge to them. So he does seem like the big, um, the, the, the guy that owns all the cards, really. Um, you know, so I, I really like that that relationship between the two of them as well. Yeah, it's hugely wise and knowledgeable, mm-hmm. um... Absolutely. And then you've got Night Nurse as well, who is another um, uh, ally of Doctor Strange and, of course, all uh, members of of the Marvel Universe. But in particular, the reason why I bring up Night Nurse is because, uh, if I remember rightly, in um, Straczynski's uh, miniseries, Night Nurse is there. Obviously, uh, Doctor Strange is a doctor, so they're in the same... um, uh, same hospital, mm-hmm. but actually she ultimately becomes clear um, oh, and is clear and is watching uh, over Doctor Strange. So one of the other big things in Doctor Strange is that he has always been his fate has always been linked to being the Sorcerer Supreme. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. The Ancient One has been looking for this person almost um, to an extent, like a messianic in, in a sense. That, yeah. Um, in effect, Stephen Strange, the accident and all that, it was but the the tumbling of the cards leading him right. to become the Sorcerer Supreme. So that's a very different Night Nurse than we've talked about on our Defenders podcast, yeah. which is uh, which is obviously by uh, Rosaria Dawson, who plays the nurse who works at night uh, throughout all of the Defenders series. So that's quite interesting, and we will we will get to see that in the Doctor Strange film coming up. There is um a, there is a character cast as. As a night nurse in in that, so so it'd be interesting. Possibly that yeah. might that might be clear. And is Rachel McAdams playing clear yeah. in the? No. no, she's night nurse. So just Rachel, night nurse. So I don't know. There's so, part of so me that thinks that potentially Rachel McAdams is clear. And her name, the similar to the yeah. Dark Knight, where uh, and that rises the, the, at the end. It was like, oh, your name, so, uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt. Was the cop, and then that the, they made that Easter egg at the end. His name was in middle name was Robin or yeah. something. Okay. Yeah. So we did actually mention on our San Diego Comic Con um, covers that the first time we'd heard about her name was as being cast as Christine Palmer. Um, Christine Palmer. There's enough letters in there that it could be uh, contorted to be clear. Yeah. As well. So uh, it's very possible that she is playing uh, that Rachel McAdams is playing Clea in the Doctor Strange film coming up. Um, cause we haven't heard any announcement at all of, of somebody being cast as Clea. She's a very well known character and, and always appeared in various different versions of Doctor Strange over the years. So it is quite possible that we, that we will it see that in the movie. It, it's a guess. Let's see if that, yeah. that works out. So that's uh, most of the allies. Is there any other major allies that he has? It's more the team affiliations. And I mean, I think the, the biggest one recently would have been um the Illuminati. Of course. Um yeah. were along with, you know, Doctor Strange is a member of the Illuminati with Iron Man, Professor X, Mr. Fantastic, Namor, and Black Bolt. Um it also leads to one of my favorite uh, comic arcs of, of Doctor Strange where, you know, he banishes uh, the Hulk uh, because of the destruction that Hulk is is, is raining down on the earth. Mm-hmm. And Doctor Strange is the only one powerful enough to deal with the Hulk. But it all, ultimately, it comes back on him uh, with the wrath of, of the Hulk is unleashed upon him in, in World War Hulk. And I mean, it, it's just one of those memorable moments for me of, of that where Doctor Strange is kind of is kind of just getting crushed by the Hulk. Yeah. Um, it's and, almost like that Loki moment in Avengers, basically. Hulk is just picking him up and yeah, smashing him about the place. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. the, the thing I love about it is that it, it links to one of the other uh, affiliations, which is the Defenders. Uh, and the original um, Defenders was le- was led by Doctor Strange and included then Hulk, Namor, and then the Silver Surfer. Right. So, right. Um, you know, there has been that relationship with Hulk... Um, with Doctor Strange, so it. I think in World War Hulk, I love the way it plays out, um, because they do know one another uh, really well. And mm-hmm. um, you know, the Defenders being kind of a looser affiliation than the Avengers, 
and dealing with off-world yeah. kind of threats. Yeah. Um, and the Sanctum Santorum has always kind of been the main base for that. It'd be interesting to see how and if the Defenders Marvel Netflix show will use the Sanctum Santorum. Will there potentially be, for the first time, a, a significant crossover uh, between film and TV? You know, wouldn't that be cool if they, if they just used the set of the Sanctum Santorum from from Scott Derrickson's movie for uh, for a couple of scenes in the Defenders TV show? That would be so cool if they just did that. Uh, that would be a nice awesome. reference. And the one thing I do think is, like, okay, we've had um, Samuel Jackson in the uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. for once, but... Benedict Cumberbatch is Sherlock Holmes in on BBC, mm-hmm. so he wouldn't be that. Uh, he wouldn't be a. Well, what I would think is probably he wouldn't mind doing the odd TV show, mm-hmm. and he would be. You could quite easily see him Absolutely. coming into the Defenders on uh, in Marvel Netflix. Yeah, because that would be. Uh, quite a lovely intro. Absolutely, and Netflix itself is getting so much big. So many big actors are coming to go to go to Netflix for you know an episode here and there. As a, a you know, it would be it would be beyond the realms of possibility that uh, Benedict might appear on the show. And then speaking of Avengers, Doctor Strange is also part of the new Avengers post Civil War. Oh yeah, and um, coming in with Iron Fist, one of my other favorite characters, uh, and Hawkeye, and that kind of, you know, to the original founding group of Luke Cage, Iron Man, Captain America, Spider-Man, and, and Wolverine. Mm. So, um, you know, he's, he's there with the new Avengers. And then I suppose from a, a more magical element, you have the Midnight Suns and the Order, uh, the Midnight Suns that's... being him and Ghost Rider. Oh, interesting. Um, so that, that's kind of interesting. Mm. So there's some really interesting affiliations that are also, you know, build his allies um, within the Marvel world. Absolutely. I think my favorite one of all the affiliations has to have been the Illuminati. I think the concept that there were the five most powerful people in the Marvel Universe were making decisions for the world and making decisions oh, for the Earth. It's, had, it's led to some great storylines yeah. where people like Captain America have stood up against the concepts of the mathematician and the futurist, which is obviously um, Mr. Fantastic and Iron Man, who are making decisions based on what could possibly happen to the world, uh, whereas Captain America is much more of a let people make their own decisions and let them fail and we will save them. Um, these The Illuminati have been behind the scenes, always trying to do the best for the world, but generally have a a different view of what of of the stupid people in the world kind of thing um which I, which I always love that that affiliation Stephen strange tends to uh, kind of keep out of it he doesn't tend to be he doesn't have the arrogance of someone like mr fantastic or tony stark in in that they whatever they do is best for the world um but i love his affiliation with them and i think someone who's who's always the behind the scenes, but from an evil side, and I think bringing on to our antagonists now is Dormammu. You oh, know, yes. Yes. he is um, the central threat from the dark dimension to um, Stephen Strange and to to Earth. You know, his, his effective aim is to add other realms to the dark dimension, take them over, and, and inhabit them. Um, and you know, he's got the fiery head. There is still the suggestion is. He's still the big bad lurking behind the scenes of, of Carl Mordo, uh, in, in the Doctor Strange movie right. or Cassilius. Uh, but, you know, it's all this kind of network of evil people all linked together. Everything's connected. It is. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I, I think that's what's really good is that, you know, in the origin, Carl Mordo is being controlled by Dormammu. Cassilius is a disciple of Carl Mordo in his evil form. Mm-hmm. So again, we have that. One of the, um, uh, the recent stories, um, with regards to, I think it was the secret invasion and you have the villain Hood, uh, who oh, again yeah. is mm-hmm. controlled by Dormammu. That was an excellent little oh. story arc. Um, yeah. yeah. So, uh, that was, Dormammu is huge with respect to, um, uh, Doctor Strange and, and being the antithesis of, of Doctor Strange. Mm-hmm. We've talked about Carl Mordo. He's very much there in the origin tale, and he is a very much a reoccurring uh, uh, villain uh, as well mm-hmm. in, in the Doctor Strange arcs. Like I, also... do, I do love that concept that you know, essentially, Strange is coming in from the outside, doesn't know anything about the Masters of the Mystic Arts, is taken by the Ancient One and chosen as being the leader. Whereas you've got Mordo, you've got Wong, who have trained for years for this position, thinking that they will take over, and some one of the outsiders is brought in and takes over the the, the mantle of being the uh, 
the Sorcerer Supreme. So you can kind of understand that it's a good it's a good piece and can work really well in in the cinematic universe. Yeah. Um, Mordo does seem to be much more supportive and a friend to uh, to Benedict Cumberbatch's version of Strange in the in the upcoming film. Um, but you can see the twist on it, where where you know his his entire future has been taken away from him by Absolutely. this outsider coming in. It's a real nice little kind of antagonism between the two. I think you then have Nightmare as well, and you have Umar, which is another big bad from um, the the dark dimension, almost uh, on, on a par with Dormammu in terms of power. Um, in terms of uh, the the TV pilot, the TV movie that we're going to review in our next podcast, mm. there is Morgan Le Fay as well, um, oh, yeah. the, the enchantress, the evil uh, witch and sorceress. And um, one of the things I'm really enjoying by about with um, The Way of the Weird, actually, now is you have the empirical which group um which is this new group that um i hadn't really kind of come across from what i could remember and they're not magical in fact they seek to destroy magic mm. and they actually think that the magicians the sorcerer supremes these realms is all a heresy that needs stamping out and so i really liking that within this new um this the the, the new uh, Doctor Strange uh, event at the moment, way of the weird, it is that this is that magic is being destroyed, and I think it leads to the end of magic. It is the next, next set yeah. of, of books within of comics within that series. But let's not smile, spoil too much about that because that is in our competition for uh, one of our listeners who could uh, who could win that in our exactly. Summer Strange competition. So uh, I'm not gonna mm-hmm. not gonna go into too much detail on the new one. But overall, that's the that's the antagonists, that's the allies, that's the origin story. Anything else about uh, about the Doctor Strange universe that we want to talk about before Just we go one in? One quick one. Um, so, John, his hands. So when he's making um, his mystic charms mm-hmm. and stuff and his signals, um, he does a very noticeable um, where he brings his index, his middle finger and one of the, the smaller in between fingers, so I can't, I can't think of the actual name, <laughs> uh, and does basically a spidey a straight up Spidey, as when he's swinging. Yeah, his straight webs. up Spidey yeah. rather than horizontal Spidey. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. And I mean that's probably to do with Ditko being um, central to both those characters. You know, creator of uh, Doctor Strange, co-creator of, of Spider-Man. So there is that, but I think it also links into the character through the fact that it is his hands that are taken away from him uh, as a surgeon, and, and so that kind of form could be. You know, his hands effectively are still damaged but he is able to wield power and precision through uh, the incantations and the magic that gives his hands the ability then to to, uh, have a a purpose and a meaningful uh, role in in, in the world Mm -hmm. so I think there's an element as well that is the damage from his hands you could argue as well Um, and and it it chimes with you know it's, it's one of the things that the trailer the teaser trailer did really well that went from you know him in his smart suit to him looking pretty bummed yeah. out with the with the beard and uh, you know his hands being very precise as the surgeon and then shaking uncontrollably whilst he's in um in Tibet. So yeah. I, I think it's there's that element definitely. And I always see a connection to eighties hair metal bands with the uh with the, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the yeah. horns the horns of the devil, I think they're, they're called <laughs> through that. So. In this one. Yeah. Um yeah. so just very quickly because one thing that I know new people coming in and I, I luckily through you guys know a bit more about Doc Strange and the astral plane and stuff is that in the cinematic universe it's a completely different look mm. in terms of the astral planes that cross over uh, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe uh, when the astral plane stuff happening is a bit more and the other plane it's a bit more inception style with folding of the world mm. and stuff that's not the comic books the comic books is a bit different Mm-hmm. I think the the best representation we've seen so far in the Marvel Cinematic Universe of what the comic book do is actually in Thor: The Dark World, uh, when you see the fight through three or four different realms. And um, so it does feel like the Doctor Strange movie could at least take that concept and just expand on it a bit more, um, showing that there are different universes, different realms that are all connected, and that Doctor Strange can pass through them uh, in his fight and battle against the evil, uh, the evil uh, characters in the other dimension, yeah. I suppose. Um, 
what I think they're using, I think we kind of mentioned this in the trailer uh, discussion on our San Diego Comic Con podcast, but what I think they're doing with the Inception piece is trying to give a reference touch point to people that wouldn't be necessarily interested in Doctor Strange as a character that don't know Doctor Strange as a character. They're trying to give a reference touch point to a movie they may have seen and may have been interested in. But I don't think that's going to be the extent of what we're going to see in the movie. I think that's just one big scene in the movie. Um, I'm hoping that we're going to see the Dark Dimension. I believe that Kevin Feige has confirmed that we will see uh, Strange travel to the Dark Dimension at some point in the film, and it will look very different. It will look like the scene in Ant Man where where he travels to the um, to the Nano Zone, isn't it? Something yeah, like the, that? Quantum or, the Quantum Zone. That that's yeah. it. I think it'll be something. We'll, we'll see things like that. That that version of the um, Marvel Universe that we have seen snippets of in the past yeah. will be pulled into Doctor Strange for him to almost tie it all together. Yeah, okay, cool. Just so people and myself <laughs> know the difference. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, and I think, you know, given stories, we've got our notable appearances and, and story arcs, kind mm. of collected editions. Uh, and I've mentioned some of them. There's obviously the Strange miniseries with um, J. Michael Straczynski and Sam Barnes. Uh-huh. Um, I've talked about World War Hulk uh, and that coming off the Illuminati um, and the 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 connections between Hulk and um, Doctor Strange with the Defenders. I think one of the really good things um, at the moment in comics, not only is the, the way of the word um, Doctor Strange uh, story, but with Secret War, oh, yes. you have him. And I think this is one of the best things with um, Doctor Strange. I think Doctor Strange, you can almost just retell his story origin. Um, it's a very good one. Um but you can get caught in that trap. And I, I think to be able to move um, him away from being just all powerful and unbeatable almost, you really have to be careful with the stories that you, you de- deal with here. And I love the fact that in Secret War, he's this right hand man to, to Doom. Uh, it really connects mm-hmm. in with a previous arc from the eighties, which was Doctor Strange and Doctor Doom, Triumph and Torment were effectively Strange helps Doom, uh, rescue his mum from Mephisto. Um, so another, big antagonist in Doctor Strange world. Um, so I love that sort of progression that these two are coming and working together again. Uh, we've seen it. It was the Wi-Fi password, Shambhala, uh, J.M. DeMathis and Dan Green. Oh, yes. Gorgeous artwork. Fabulous. This is actually something quite noticeably different from any other of the graphic novels. I mean, in terms of art, it's gorgeous. It's It really is, um, you know... Uh, are apparent to, to Ditko's artwork mm. on this. It's really beautiful, very different style, but beautiful. And um, it's a spiritual kind of tale, as well as being then a comic book story. Uh, and this is about the Lords of Shambhala, again, a bit like the Vishanti, a, a higher race of people that offer Doctor Strange the ability to save humanity and, and bring them to paradise, but it means killing most of them. Mm-hmm. So it's a real catch-22. Um, and then he does like to play around with... Um, Count Dracula. So you have uh, Doctor Strange versus Count Dracula. You have the vampiric versus uh, the Montessi formula. Uh, all this where Doctor Strange is tricked into reading from the vampiric versus uh, he turns his brother into a vampire. I mean, really good. Like mm. um, so, so different, so different yeah. from a lot of the comic book yeah. characters. Um, and then, of course. To bring back to the original Strange Tales, Mm -hmm. um, you have Marvel 1602 as a miniseries uh, written by Neil Gaiman, uh, where Doctor Strange is the court physician to Queen Elizabeth I, uh, and Nick Fury being uh, the the Walsingham of Queen Elizabeth I, Mm -hmm. you know, her... uh, Spy uh, and his network of spies. Can't, really, can't really recommend good. that highly enough. Yeah, yes. absolutely great would miniseries. Have been, would have been my choice. So before we get into a Doctor Strange one hundred and two, because we're almost getting to that point now, yeah. Chris, do you have any any recommendations of stuff that you've read of Doctor Strange? I have one, which is um, some of you may be aware of a uh, spin off that Marvel do every now and again called What Ifs. Oh yes, which is Love some them. amazing, great one off stories where they'll do a what if Spider-Man never got bitten by a radioactive spider Mm. uh, or what if Captain America wasn't Steve Rogers. All these amazing, great things. Mm -hmm. And it gets even weirder. One fantastic one is what if Tony Stark became the Source of Supreme? Interesting. And Mm. it's this fantastic, our work is amazing, but it's this story where it melds machinery and magic. So Tony Stark 
adds like all these tech elements to and the eye of Agamado is a headband that goes over one eye right and kind of gives him like telescopic visions and reads out um kind of spells to him and oh it's just fantastic if you can find it it's this one off shot and it's just fin- really really good excellent Excellent. And I will say, uh, with Doctor Strange as the character is now almost 50 years old, or just over 50 years old now, um, Marvel Unlimited is your friend here. If you can get what it, get a deal for Marvel Unlimited for a euro a month or Definitely. for, uh, for, I'm, I'm paying a tenner a month, I think now for it. Um, it's been so helpful for me. I've been reading right back to those, those strange tales, comic books. John mentioned earlier on in Doctor Strange's origin that he's an arrogant physician to begin with. There's nothing better than reading how arrogant he is oh, in those comic is books. Brutal. There's a great moment when there's some guys that have set up a clinic to cure cancer are coming to this world renowned physician saying, you've got to help us. Come, come to us. Use your, uh, use your talents to be able to uh, cure cancer for the rest of the world. And Dr. Strange goes to them, well, how much are you going to pay me? And they go, well, it's for charity. It's trying to cure cancer. And he goes, come back to me when you pay for my talents. Uh, <laughs> he, so he's, he's so obnoxious. There's nothing better than reading those versions of the comic books, those early versions. So get out there, get a, get a Marvel and Marvel subscription. If you can get one for a cheap price for a couple of weeks, read a couple of the issues of, of Strange Tales. They're really well worth it. Yeah. And I think going to that what if as well, there's, there's, to like there's um the doctor is out by mark wade and, and emma rios uh, where he's no longer the sorcerer supreme and that ties in as well with like secret invasion mm. where effectively he reflects on his worthiness to be the sorcerer supreme and uh, whether he should be uh, and ultimately passes it on to brother voodoo and mm. um, so spoilers. you know yeah, yeah spoilers <laughs> but i mean that's all within the secret invasion arc and you at uh, that we'd mentioned previously with Hood and, and Dormammu, really good. But they're kind of nice little ideas, you know, what if he wasn't the Sorcerer Supreme or he gave it up? And of course, for a real personal one between, you know, two friends uh, and equals with regards to Wong uh, and Stephen Strange, uh, The Oath uh, by Brian K. Vaughan yeah. is really, really uh, good uh, as well. Another great Marvel writer, really, really enjoyed yeah. Brian K. Vaughan stuff. Um, I think we got... Everything in the comic books, right? And I know we're into Summer of Strange, so we've got uh, we've got a couple of things coming up uh, that we're going to be covering before we get to the Doctor Strange movie in October. Um, so how about some of the appearances? If people don't read comic books, if they want to get a movie or uh, watch a TV show that ha- that could be connected to Doctor Strange, what have we got coming up? So in our next episode, the first one we're going to be covering is Doctor Strange 1978, the TV pilot for uh, an unfinished TV show, unfortunately. Uh, we're going to be covering that in our next episode. Some other ones that are that are out there. There's the um, Doctor Strange, the animated movie. Um, I think it's Doctor Strange, the Sorcerer Supreme um, is the full title. Mm-hmm. That's a Lionsgate uh, animated movie uh, that came out 2005. So we'll be looking at that as well. Um, I remember the day when that happened and I was thought this is the best I was going to get. And <laughs> now we have a film coming out in three months. So um it can always happen. Absolutely. Yeah. And with the animated one, we can't stress and I can't stress enough how amazing it is. So, spoilers there. Ooh. Ooh. Um, I, I will go down the deep end of this because I love these animated ones, these Lion Gate films, because they're just so great. There's some ult- there's the actual Ultimates 1 or the Ultimates 2 mm, ones yeah. as well. Um, and I, I would le- watch these animated ones at least once a year uh, or jump around through different ones. So, I don't forget, now that's two of the ones that, that we'll be covering. So, mm-hmm. go check them out. One is the Doctor Strange pilot is on YouTube. Yes, it is. So have a watch and then come back and listen to us talk about that. And then the animated one, just go buy the DVD. Mm-hmm. There's, it's out there. You can find it pretty much oh, everywhere. You can find it cheap as well. Yeah. 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 Uh, and have a watch and come back to us with your thoughts. And uh, we'll, we'll try and answer as many of them. Absolutely. Uh, and finally, that he has made a few appearances. We've mentioned that uh, obviously Steve Ditko created both uh, Doctor Strange and co-created uh, Spider-Man. So he has appeared in the Spider-Man animated series during the oh. 90s. In actually, I think all three or four versions of the Spider-Man animated series that has had one episode that's yeah. featured yeah. Doctor Strange. So uh, so there's definitely something there for everybody out, out there as we go through our Summer of Strange Thanks so much for joining us for Doctor Strange Absolutely. number one. Do you defend Doctor Strange, the character? But <laughs> <laughs> well, this class, the class is in silence. You better. Yes. And that was all 101 
tips of Doctor Strange. Yes, thank you so much, John, for your thoughts and your and your ideas on Doctor Strange. I've definitely learned a few things there that I just, didn't, wasn't aware just of. Just a tad. <laughs> yeah, and really looking forward to getting into the the Doctor Strange universe. Absolutely, but I mean, if there's anything else that people feel that I've missed out or we've missed out, or um, you want to add to uh, suggestions for comic art. Uh, that you could read or mm-hmm. to uh, we can recommend um, please uh, bring it in on feedback at defenderstvpodcast.com mm-hmm. on our Facebook uh, group come and join us we're over at facebook.com uh, forward slash groups forward slash Defenders TV Podcast or on Twitter at Defenders Cast uh, and remember um, you can find us um, at defenderstvpodcast.com forward slash iTunes or search Defenders TV Podcast. Um, are you getting a, a theme here? Um, on any other good podcast catcher. And if you leave a review, as we said at the start, um, there is a competition for Summer of Strange uh, for um, the for reviews uh, left uh, on our iTunes mm-hmm. handle. Absolutely. We don't want competitive reviews. We don't want you to say something better than the person before you or something worse <laughs> yeah. than the person before you. Anybody who leaves a review over on iTunes and pops us on an email, we will uh, put you into the hat for our draw, which will take place uh, around the time that Luke Cage is coming out as we finish off our Summer of Strange coverage. So thank you so much for joining us. Chris, thank you so much for joining us. John, thank you so much for all your thoughts and all your uh, your pushing towards Doctor Strange uh, which October com- which comes out October 28th, I think, in Ireland. Yeah. Uh, looking forward to that one and thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much for listening and we'll be back with the TV pilot uh, show of Doctor Strange. Yes. See you next time. When we return from the dark dimension. Absolutely. <laughs> Bye. Agamato. Bye.